Hey, High Tides. You know what comes tomorrow? And it only happens every four years? Yeah, it's a leap year. So let's watch a segment about it. Hey, High Tides. It's the month of February. And that's the shortest month of the year. Can you believe that? But something's different. This year, there's one extra day. How come? Well, you see, in order to find that answer, we need to go back to the Roman ages. Specifically, Julius Caesar and his creation of the Julius calendar. See, back then, Romans had a bunch of events. Gladiator fights, parties, wars, and they had a small problem. Their calendar was wrong. When it was a winter, or supposed to be in the winter in the calendar, it was summer. And when it was spring, it was fall. For some reason, the calendar was off. And it wasn't that they didn't know how long a day was, or how long a year was. They actually knew perfectly well how long it was. It only came down when trying to make it easy to understand is when these errors came about. You see, a calendar is just an easy to read version of where the Earth is in the solar system. A day isn't a whole number. It's not 24 hours. It's actually a decimal. This one to be specific. And the same thing applies for a year. But well, why have that as a whole number? It'd be easier to have it as a decimal and divide it into 12, right? Well, it becomes harder to tell time if you do it that way. You see, since it's a decimal, they slowly add up over time. This is where Julius realized the mistake was being made. So, he did the math, or at least he made his astrologers made them do the math, that every four years, he'd add an extra day. That way, the clock would basically reset and prevent it from going further. This idea in and of itself was also implemented with our modern calendar, which is the reason why we have that extra February. All right, so yeah, the leap year is pretty cool, but I'm kind of curious. Who's born on like a leap year or a leap day? And what actually happens to those people? Hi Tides, your year is about to get one day longer. Wanna know why? Well, Saturday, February 29th is a leap day, the day inserted into the calendar every four years to keep your calendar operating smoothly. This extra day makes the year 366 days long instead of 365 days like regular years. There are many famous people born on a leap day. Here are some of them. Ja Rule, an American rapper, singer, songwriter, and actor from Queens, New York. Anthony J. Robbins, known as Tony Robbins, is an American author, life coach, and philanthropist. Another famous American singer is Dinah Shores, along with Algerian musician, singer, and songwriter Khalid, with German fashion model Lina Gerke, as well as Pedro Sanchez, the Prime Minister of Spain, along with Michelle Morgan, who was a French actress. Antonio Sabato, an American Italian model, and finally Aileen Warnos, a convicted serial killer. All right, so having the extra day every four years is pretty cool, but you know what I think is better? Having an extra hour of sleep before every school day. But that's my opinion, so let's see how many of you agree with me. Even though we have to wake up early, we get to leave early at 2.20. And if we start late, we have to start at 3.30 or something like that. So, nah, I'd rather leave at 2.20 and have the rest of my day. Because it teaches kids how to be responsible so that they can learn in the real world what's going on. Because having them starting late, they're just going to be lazy. We surveyed about 1,800 students, most of them middle and senior high school students right here in our community and about 80 percent of them declared that they were feeling lethargic, tired, fatigued. The research 
Uh, now the community is going to meet up with us and provide their opinion because we recognize that the impact is going to be on the stakeholders, the parents, the business leaders, uh, police entities throughout the community. Well, the disadvantage is that I like to wake up early. And that means I'm going to have not a lot to do until school starts. I like to get things going right away. Uh, the advantage, I think, is that students will have a little bit more time to sleep, I think. Um, but then again, I think it's, it's going to be 50-50 either way. So I like it early. That's just my, just my feeling. I was wondering, even if we did get the extra hour of sleep, is it actually going to make a difference? Hello there, Miami Beach Senior High Schoolers. Hi, yeah, it's me, uh, Isaac. I'm not gonna do any uh, walk arounds or interviews today, nothing wild like that. You see, I've been having some trouble sleeping recently, you know, waking up late, going to bed late. I've decided that for today, I'm just gonna do a nice, cozy little public service announcement about how to get better sleep in your own house. Sleep is the most important meal of the day. A lot of times before I go to bed, I find myself getting into arguments about silly things online. Things like politics, or video games, or what genre of punk rock music I like. Off the record, it's post-hardcore. That's not to say I don't like the other genres. I just like post-hardcore the best. That stuff really gets me grooving. Other times, I find myself watching a television show or some funny online video. It's important that we don't let the rabbit holes online get the best of us. When you have to wake up at 5 a.m., every minute counts. Another sleepy time tip is to make a playlist full of music for when you're winding down from a long day. It's not the kind of stuff I usually listen to, but I've made a playlist full of songs that are like classical music or 1970s synthesizer instrumentals and maybe even some indie pop. It's the kind of music that makes me think, wow, can people have been this mellow back when you can die from something like improper chamber pot usage or Legionnaire's disease? I got a little grim there, sorry. If you want, you can get this playlist from me. I don't mind. Go ahead and ask. All right, believe it or not, I have a bed to go through as well. Oh, what's that? One more tip for you? Oh, all right. I know sometimes when you get home late and then you have a club and then you have homework to do, it can already be 8, 9 p.m. by the time you have the chance to do anything fun. Now, because of that, sometimes you end up going to bed later than you mean to, because you're so wrapped up in whatever you're doing. Well, I don't really have any advice for that one, sorry. Capitalism can be a cruel mistress. Well, that's all I have. Whether you're a freshman who just lost his ID badge in the lunch line, or a senior who's about to ask out the only other gay guy in your grade, I wish you good luck, and I hope you have a good night's sleep. I'm Isaac, and uh, goodbye for now. So sleep is pretty wonderful, and getting the extra hour of sleep is pretty cool. But can it protect us from something like the coronavirus? I mean, I hope so, but let's learn a little bit more about the virus. Hey, Hide Sides. As most of us know, a new virus has alarmed everyone with its uprising in China named the coronavirus. The coronavirus is flu-like symptoms that can lead to death if not treated. The virus has opened many eyes with its recent deaths piling by the numbers in most parts of China and quickly spreading. The virus can easily be prevented by using simple methods of hygiene like covering our mouths when we sneeze or cough and washing our hands. The virus has since been the reason behind 2,600 deaths in China as of late February and quickly rose in number. 
China has since been banned from any transportation to the US, Russia, and many other countries as well. A recent cruise ship set to dock in Cambodia was finally allowed to dock after two weeks of being stranded at sea because of the alarm of passengers possibly having the coronavirus. After being released and set to dock, these same passengers have came back with dozens of cases of the coronavirus. As of late February, the coronavirus has also now spread to Italy with 229 cases and is quickly rising in number similar to China. As of now, the coronavirus is still considered an epidemic due to the mass majority only being in China, but can easily be a global pandemic if it spreads to other parts of the world. You might ask, where did this originate? Well, researchers believe this disease originated from the animals being ate in China like bats, mice, rats, and other street rodents prone to disease. The disease seems to only be thriving in cold temperatures. The coronavirus is not able to thrive in hot temperatures. High tides, be safe and think before you travel and always stay clean. So I think that's a great way to end the episode. So I will see you next week, High Tides. Bye.